Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will continue to learn about pharmacology by discussing pharmacodynamic. This will be part of a series of videos to help you understand the basics of pharmacology and to set the foundation for you. So make sure to check out the other videos that I've uploaded already. If you end up learning anything from this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more. Also, feel free to give feedback and ideas on future videos. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy. Now, according to ASHP, pharmacodynamics refers to the relationship between drug concentration at the site of action and the results and effects, including the time course and the intensity of the therapeutic and adverse effects. So first, let's take a look at the site of action. So please remember, this is right after distribution. So here's the drug at the site of action. Now it's moving from the blood to act on the receptors on the cells. Receptors are proteins that receive chemical information when a ligand, such as a drug, binds to the active site. After the interaction, things happen within the cell, and then we get a response. So in this video, we will cover these three things. Well, not necessarily the first one, which is really about the drug itself. And that's because I already have a video on this on my channel, and I will include the link right above. And it covers agonist versus antagonist, the different agonists, and the different types of antagonists. Now, drugs bind to different types of receptors, and we can categorize them into four main ones. First is the ion channel receptors. Now, once the ligand binds, it opens the middle and it allows ions to move into the cell. This one is pretty straightforward. Next, we have the G protein coupled receptors. G protein is a protein that contains three subunits, the alpha, the beta, and the gamma, and is bound to a transmembrane receptor. In its inactive form, the alpha unit is bound to GDP, and once a ligand or drug binds to the receptor, a conformational change occur and GTP will replace GDP. The alpha subunit bound to the GTP molecule in this case will dissociate and propagate a signal cascade leading to a response. Next, we have the enzyme linked receptors. These are transmembrane receptors that have catalytic sites on the cytoplasmic domain. So example of these will be the tyrosines. So as you can see, they have the tyrosine residues attached. That's what I have here as TYR. These tyrosine residues serve as kinases. Kinases catalyze the transfer of phosphate groups. So when a ligand binds to these receptors, they join together and form a dimer. The tyrosine kinases would then take a phosphate group from ATP and autophosphorylate the dimer. This will propagate a signal cascade, which will then lead to a response. Finally, the intracellular receptors. These are receptors within the cell itself. The drugs that bind to it are usually lipophilic, so they could cross the membrane and bind to the receptor. The drug receptor complex will then move into the nucleus of the cell, bind to the DNA, and regulate gene expression leading to synthesis of proteins. So these drugs interact with the receptors and then we get a response. Let's analyze this drug response relationship a little bit more. Sometimes we refer to it as the dose-response relationship. If you plot the dose-response relationship on a graph where the dose is on the x-axis and the response is on the y-axis, the graph will look something like this. So there is a minimum dose where you will get a response and also a maximum dose to get 100% of the drug's therapeutic response. Sometimes this is referred to as the maximum effect or the Emax. From this, we can identify the max dose to achieve the max effect or response, which is the ED or the EC, so effective dose or effective concentration. Then we have the ED50, 
or EC50, which is the dose required to achieve 50% of the maximum response. This is also known as the potency. When two drugs are tested in the same individual, the drug with a lower ED50 would be considered more potent. This means that a lesser amount of the more potent drug is needed to achieve the same effect as the less potent drug. A drug that's more potent doesn't necessarily mean that it causes more side effects. Now, there are other pharmaceuticals dynamic concepts that influence the drug response. First, the binding affinity. This is the strength of the binding interaction between the drug and receptor. We use the dissociation constant, KD, to evaluate the strength of the binding. Based off this, let's test your understanding. Both drug A and drug B bind to receptor Z. The dissociation constant for drug A is 20, and the dissociation constant for drug B is 100. Which drug has a stronger binding interaction with receptor Z? The answer in this case would be drug A. The higher the dissociation constant, the weaker the binding interaction, and it's easier for the drug to leave the receptor. Next is the receptor occupancy. The more receptors that are occupied by the drug, the greater the pharmacodynamic response. But all receptors do not need to be occupied in order to get a maximum response. This is due to the concept of spare receptors. Spare receptors are receptors that exist in excess of those required to produce a full effect. Based off this, let's test your understanding. Drug A interact with receptor Z, but drug A needs to bind to 75% of receptor Z to get a maximum response. There are a total of 100 quantity receptor Z. How many are spare receptors? In this case, it will be 25. Next, we have the concept of receptor up and down regulation. This all comes into play when there is a chronic exposure of a receptor to a drug. Now, it depends on if the drug is an agonist or an antagonist. Chronic exposure of a receptor to an agonist causes down regulation or a decrease in the number of receptors. This is simply because the receptor is overly stimulated. The opposite is seen with antagonists. Chronic exposure leads to upregulation or an increase in the number of receptors. So if the receptor is being blocked and not stimulated enough, the cell will increase the amount of receptors on its surface to account for this. Finally, there's also the concept of therapeutic index in pharmacodynamics, which I have a video on this already, so I will include the link right above. And that will be all, folks. Once again, make sure to check out the other videos that I've uploaded on pharmacology. And if you learn anything from this video, anything at all, please hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment with questions or feedback, and also follow me on Instagram at Pharmacist Academy. Thank you for watching this video and take care.